Welcome to Flight Test. I'm John. Today we're going to be painting airplanes. So something I'm super excited about is in 2020 we're going to be releasing the BF-109. Now there have been a ton of people asking about this plane and there's been a reason that we wanted to wait just a little while longer. We wanted to be able to put together a video on painting this plane. This plane is absolutely gorgeous. So check this out. Today we're going to take this and we're going to turn it in to this. I love the paint scheme on German planes. If you notice on the wings, you'll see that there's a very sharp angular camouflage pattern. Up on the fuselage, you're going to see a much, much smoother pattern that presents a little bit of a challenge when painting, but there's some tricks that I'm going to show you today and we're going to go through them step by step. The BF-109 is going to be one of the first aircraft that's going to be kitted using Maker Foam. Maker Foam has all the same properties as the classic flight test foam, but it's white instead of the craft paper color. This makes for a much easier aircraft to paint. So full disclosure before we get started, when it comes to painting, I'm all about speed. If you're watching this video, you're going to see me do things and say to yourself, you know what? I I think it could be done better if he would just take more time here or maybe a little more time there. You're probably right. But by the time I get an aircraft built, the only thing I'm thinking about is getting it up in the air and flying. The time I spend prepping and painting is generally only an hour. Now that doesn't include drying time, but I try to cut corners anywhere I can because I want to get this plane painted and I want to get it flying. So I want to talk a little bit about the paint that I use and how I do prep. So on this particular aircraft, you can see that we've got a yellow nose and then we've got two tones of gray. I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum products for this. This is a paint and primer. A lot of people ask me what paint that I use. You know, is there a specific brand? I do like the Rust-Oleum paint and primer combination, but any spray paint will work as long as you let it dry thoroughly. As far as prep goes, I just lightly scuff the surface using steel wool. Today I'm going to be using a number three steel wool. It's pretty coarse. I have used stuff that's coarser. I've used stuff that's finer. It doesn't really matter which one you use, though I have found that the coarser steel wool does scratch the surface a little bit faster. One of the things that's going to be included with the speed build kit are going to be these masks. These are going to make adding all this detail along the fuselage extremely simple. These are going to mount right over the wings and I'm going to show you once these things are mounted to the fuselage how we can get this feathered look all along the fuselage. A couple other items that we're going to be using today is this Scotch Blue Tape by 3M. This is a really low tack masking tape. I really like this stuff because once I apply masking tape right along this yellow line, I don't want to be pulling paint away when I remove the tape. So you'll definitely want to get a low tack tape. One other item that I use for masking is aluminum foil. You can see I've got a heavy duty aluminum foil. Make sure and get the heavy duty stuff. There's some that's pretty thick and then some that's pretty thin. You'll definitely want to get the thicker stuff for use with masking. Also, grab a couple pieces of foam just a couple of pieces of scrap like this, and we're gonna use this to help with overspray. With that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start over here on the right wing, and I'm gonna do this in real time. Once I do the wing in real time, then we'll switch over to a time lapse, but I wanna give you an idea of how much time I spend on a particular section. Now, when doing the aircraft, I am gonna spend a little bit more time here on the nose, on the rudder itself, and anywhere that I'm gonna be putting decals. I typically put decals here on both wings, here on the fuselage, and here on the canopy. I am gonna spend a little bit more time scuffing those areas but in general, a light scuffing is gonna be sufficient to get paint to stick. So let's get started. And 
And that's it. You can see that it does not take very much time at all to prep the surface. The only other thing I do, and I'm gonna wait till I get the entire aircraft done, is I've got a brush that I'll go and I'll remove all the pieces of steel wool that have come off. So let's go ahead and do the rest of the aircraft. Okay, we have completely scuffed up the aircraft. This has been done in five, six minutes. So you can see it doesn't take a whole lot of time to prep it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and brush this off and then let's put down our first layer of paint. I'm getting rid of all the fibers that have broken off from my steel wool pad. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna apply yellow paint to the nose, to the tail, and then I'm also gonna be applying yellow to the underside of each of the wing tips. Let's move over to the paint booth and we'll get started. The first color we're gonna be doing is yellow, and yellow is not forgiving at all. Make sure that you put very thin coats on. We're gonna be putting three to four coats on, uh, I'm probably going to allow about 15 to 20 minutes in between coats. Once I've got my paint mixed up, we're going to paint the nose. I'll flip it around. We'll do the tail. We'll let things dry just a little bit, and then I'll flip it upside down, and we'll do the bottom side as well. It's going to be a little noisy here in the spray booth because of the exhaust fan. We'll do the best we can. So if you look close there on the first coat, everything looks really blotchy. It's not covering everything. That's just fine because we're going to add two to three more coats after this. And once we get the third or fourth coat, it'll look perfect. You'll also notice that we didn't mask anything. I'm not worried about masking at this point. We'll start doing it once the yellow paint dries. Let's give this about 15 minutes and then we'll add another coat. Okay, the paint's had about 15 minutes to dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply another really light coat, and I'm looking at the plane, and since the bottom isn't making contact with the table, and of course the wing tips are up, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a light coat of paint to the bottom as well. Okay, we'll let that dry another 15 minutes, come back and do it again. 
Okay, paint's looking good. Let's go ahead and add coat number three. Here, coverage is looking good. We'll let that dry a little bit longer and add the final coat. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and apply the last coat. This will be number four. Hopefully this will get it. Now that we've got four coats on, you'll want to allow about two hours for the paint to dry. If you're using this, two hours is definitely going to be enough. If you're using a different brand, check the label. It may require more time for the paint to completely dry. I'm actually going to rush things a little bit. When I go and mask, the paint is not going to be completely cured. So you're going to see some paint peeling once I remove the tape. I'm going to do this on purpose because there are going to be mistakes when you paint, and I want to show you how to fix those mistakes. So we'll see you back here in a few minutes after the paint's had time to dry a little bit. Now that the paint's had time to dry, let's mask stuff off. I'm going to be using aluminum foil to mask the nose. What I like about aluminum foil is it doesn't stick to the paint. You can see that it doesn't give me a perfect line, but it's pretty close. What I'm trying to do is I want to follow this seam right here. And so where there's a little bit of paint showing between the seam and the aluminum foil, I'm going to add some masking tape. Okay, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay, that'll hold stuff in place. If you look on the finished model, you'll see that I've got a little bit of a stair step right there. So I'm going to add one layer of tape past this seam. I'm going to drop it down to where it almost touches the wing. Just going to slightly overlap the other piece of tape, just slightly, and bring it around. There we go. I'm going to flip the aircraft upside down and we're going to tape the wing tips. I'm just kind of eyeballing things. Got to do the other side. I'm going to check here in the middle. Looks like I need I need to add a piece of tape here. And now we'll mask off the rudder. Paint still feels a little bit tacky. Normally you'll want to give this a couple hours. I rushed it like I mentioned earlier. We're probably going to get a little bit of peeling since I'm in a hurry. So I think what I'll do, I'll add some aluminum foil while I can. So I'm just taking the aluminum foil, running my finger along the trailing edge. That'll give me a line. And I'll just cut it just past that line. And that'll hold in place. Now when I add tape, it'll just be right here near the hinge. 
So if anything pulls away, it's going to be pretty minor and very easy to fix. Mask this below. Side with the control horn is always going to be a little bit harder to mask. That's pretty good. Let's do the other side. Pull that a little bit at the bottom. If you're trying to get a little bit cleaner line, you can spend a little bit more time lining everything up just right. But I'm happy with this. This is a wartime production plane. There's going to be overspray and a few mistakes. Now that everything is masked off, I'm going to look and make sure I don't have any gaps. Looks like I do have a gap over here on this side. A little bit of a gap right here. I'm going to cover that up. Let me check the other side. Okay, this side looks good. Make sure my tape is stuck down. All right, once I'm happy with the way my masking is, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my first layer of light gray paint. With everything masked off, let's add some paint. I'm gonna start on the bottom. I like gray paint. It goes on easily and it dries really fast. Usually I only have to allow about 10 minutes between coats and so I think I'll be able to get this in two. Keep your fingers crossed, see how it goes. All right, we'll give that 10 minutes and we'll go ahead and add the next coat. One coat down, one to go. Okay, let's give that 10 minutes. We'll flip it over, paint the other side. We'll be back in 10 minutes and finish it up. All right, last coat. All right, that looks good. We're gonna let this dry for a half hour, 45 minutes, and I think we're gonna be able to start masking for the camo. So it's only been about 10 minutes since we've put the last coat of paint on top. We're going to go ahead and start masking. Now, if we were to take masking tape and put it on right now, we'd pull that masking tape off, the paint would come with it. So we're going to try something else. If you look over here at this airplane, you can see that I've got bits of foam. And you can see how they kind of correspond to the camo pattern. What we're going to do is we're going to take this first piece, and I'm going to peel the paper off. And we're going to add some shape to it, just like we do when we build the aircraft itself. I'm just running it over the end of the table, so it has a little bit of an airfoil. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to lay it right here on the wing. And you can see that I've got some pins here. And I'm going to pin this in place. What I want to make sure of is that the foam is all the way down against the wing skin. That way, whenever we spray, it's going to form a nice straight line. We don't want any feathering on the wing.
You can see that I'm running my pins in at an angle. This helps the foam stay down. Let's do the other wing. Now that I've got all the pieces in place, I'm going to inspect each one to make sure that there's no gap between the foam mask and the wing. If I find a gap, I'm going to add another pin and close the gap up. Now I've got to put a little bit of masking here on the horizontal stabilizers. Now that that's done, we're going to add masks to the fuselage. Now that the wing has been masked off, we're going to go ahead and mask off the fuselage. Let's start with taking the mask and you can see this relief for the wing. Go ahead and lay it over the wing like I'm doing here. And I want to make sure at the bottom that it's pushed all the way up against the fuselage. At the top, however, I'm going to leave about a quarter inch gap. And I'm going to put several pins through the mask and through the fuselage from the front all the way to the back. You're going to get a little bit of variation in spacing. I want to try to maintain about a quarter inch. Sometimes it'll be a little wider, sometimes it'll be a little narrower, and that's okay. Just make sure that it is not up against the fuselage. If it's up against the fuselage and you add paint, you're going to get a very sharp, very defined line, and that's not what we're looking for. We want one that's kind of a feather transition between dark gray and the light gray. I'm looking down it looks like I've got a really good consistent gap from one end to the other. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now I'm looking at it from the center and I'm making sure that my gap is similar on both sides and I'll add some additional pins as needed. If I'm too far in, I can put a pin in at an angle and that'll help the mask stick out just a little further. Okay, that looks really good. Now, before we paint, I wanna talk to you about how I'm actually going to apply the paint. This is a little bit tricky. It's going to be a little bit difficult to show on camera. So I'm gonna spend some time before I actually begin spraying showing you the angles I'm going to use when I spray. What I'm wanting to make sure of is that my line on the fuselage is even with this line up and down. If I come in with my paint up high, it's going to drop that line down. If I come in too low, it's going to raise the line up. So what I want to do is I want to hold my paint even with the area that I'm spraying. I basically want to be hitting the mask at 90 degrees. I don't want to be too high. I don't want to be too low. The same on the wings. I want to make sure I'm not coming in from the side. I don't want paint to go running underneath this foam. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to drop that paint straight down. Once we begin hitting the fuselage from the side here, we're gonna have a line up here at the top that does not have paint on it. That's where our pieces of scrap foam are gonna come in. We're gonna be holding those in place to prevent spray from going up, over, and down in ruining the line we created with our mask. So for example, when you see me holding this mask just like this, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to prevent overspray from going down in between the fuselage and the mask itself. So you'll see me using masks in different ways. I'm always trying to prevent overspray from going somewhere that I don't want it to go. All right, let's get started.
We'll give that time to dry. I for sure went a little too heavy on gray. You can see where I've got runs down my mask. Hopefully, I didn't have a whole lot of runs on the body itself. If so, this will be a good way to show you how to fix runs. Okay, we're ready for our next coat of paint. And you can see along the mask that we've got all kinds of runs. Uh, for sure, I put way too much paint on. The light gray went on really well. I was able to put a real thick coat on and there was no issues with, with running. The darker gray, um, it was a little more prone to run. The good thing is all the runs were on the mask itself. So uh, we're, we're just fine. Now I'm looking at this line and I notice that it's just a little bit harder than what I want. I want it to have more of a feathered look. So what I'm going to do on this next coat, instead of keeping my paint down low, I'm going to come up high, not real high, but I'm going to do a real quick pass. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow a little bit of the, the spray to create a feathered look. I'm going to start just like I did before over here on the wings. I'm going to hold this upright again and you'll notice that as I'm spraying the wings I'm hitting it head on here but as I get here I'm, I'm being cautious not to let my spray get over here because it would easily ruin this line that we've created with the mask up there on the fuselage. Alright so let's get started. Okay, I think we've got good coverage. Now it's just a waiting game. We have to wait 20, 30 minutes and we'll start peeling the mask off and see how everything looks. Okay, the paint's had almost enough time to dry. I am kind of in a hurry. That's just the way I am. Uh, let's see how this looks. It looks like there is a little bit of feathering at the edges, but it's not bad. If you want something that looks a little bit better, you can always allow the paint to fully dry, and then you can add tape. Tape will give you a perfect line, but actually I'm real happy with this. I probably won't be using much tape anymore. Oh, that looks nice. I know this one slipped a little bit. I think I might have had a little bit of a gap. Yeah, there's a little bit of overspray there, but you know what? I am not going to worry about that. Okay, that looks really nice. And now, let's see how these did. Oh, yeah, there we go. That looks really good. You can see we don't have a hard line at all. That The feathering looks good. I don't see any runs. I was afraid that maybe it had run just a little bit, but if it did, it is very, very minor. Hopefully this side will be the same. There we go. That looks good. Looks like I had a little bit of paint showing through or it peeled away. I'm not really sure what happened there. We'll go back and fix that here in a little bit. Okay, Let's see how the yellow looks. Actually, before we do the yellow, I probably had better touch that up. So let me show you a way that uh, we can do that without having to get wild and crazy with the masking. I'm going to find the piece that went right here and I'm going to put it back in place. I'm going to make sure it's lined up just right. I'm 
gonna grab a piece of scrap and I'm gonna hold it just like this and I'm gonna shoot paint straight down between this piece and this piece. Okay, that looks good. Chances are you're gonna have several areas in your aircraft where you're gonna have to go touch things up just a little bit. You don't have to tape things off a lot of times. A lot of times you'll just be able to hold a piece of foam in an area like, like I just did where you're just keeping that overspray from going where you don't want. Uh, you can see there was very little masking. It just took just a few seconds to fix that. So we'll see if we have any more goof ups that we can fix. Okay, I'm gonna start here on the nose. And let's see how the yellow ended up turning out. Now, if I'm gonna be peeling any paint, it's gonna be on this piece right here. Now, I did not allow near enough time for this to dry. So yeah, it looks like I'm just peeling just a little bit. You can see right here where a little bit of the Paint is coming off with the tape, but we'll show you how to fix that. And I'm peeling really slowly. Okay, you can see we're at the same spot on both sides, I peeled some paint away. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to fix that. There's a couple different ways that we can touch this up. On this side, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spray a puddle of paint over here and I'm gonna dip my finger in it and touch it to the area where it's been peeled away. Make sure that the piece of scrap that you're spraying on is perfectly clean and doesn't have any dirt or old paint on it. And just dab it on. But just from a couple feet away, you won't even be able to tell. Here I've got a little bit of overspray. I'll do the same thing. Dab a little on my finger. Again, I may have to do that a time or two, but from a few feet away, you'll never be able to see it. So on the other side, if you're wanting to spray, and you're not wanting to dab it with your finger, you can just put a mask in place and put a piece of tape here. And over here on this side, I'm just gonna run a piece of scrap. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shoot my yellow spray paint right where I've got my temporary mask and we'll clean up that area. I'm a little bit concerned about overspray here, so I'm gonna put a piece of aluminum foil across here. There we go, just a quick spray. And the area where the paint had peeled away is completely covered. So, if you wanna do a quick mask, that works. If you just wanna dip your finger in it, that works also. It just kinda of depends on how good you want it to look. Let's peel the rest off. We shouldn't have much paint peeling away because most of the mask was created with aluminum foil. Okay, that looks really good. And let's see how the tail did. If there's any area that's gonna peel away, it's gonna be here on the tail. Real gently peel that off. Okay, that actually looks really good. Looks like my tape wasn't quite down all the way right there at the edge, but I'm gonna let that slide. This is wartime production here. Okay, I'm gonna peel the tape off the wing tips on the bottom here. There we go. Look at that. I didn't... That is me not hitting it with steel wool. That is completely on me. 
for not prepping. Let's see if I did any better on the other side. All right, you can see that no paint came off, so I completely failed over here, but that's all right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit that with steel wool. I'm gonna put on a quick mask just using a piece of foam, spray it, and let that dry. So on this area where I did not hit it with steel wool, I'm gonna go back and hit it with steel wool. I'll add a temporary mask and we'll just spray this area. Once I get that done, I need to paint the stacks. I completely forgot to do those. And then we'll let the paint dry completely and then we'll add vinyl decals. Man, I completely missed that. What was I thinking? The last thing I need to do is paint the stacks. I'm gonna go glue these to a piece of foam and I'm gonna hit them with some brown paint. You can see here where I've glued manifolds to a piece of foam. This keeps them from blowing away when I'm hitting them with spray paint. I'm just gonna use a brown, kind of a rusty color. There we go. Now let's go make some decals. Now that the paint's dried, let's turn our attention to the decals. The decals are gonna be available from Flight Test as a PDF. You can download exactly what I'm using here. Now I used a vinyl cutter to cut these out. You can also cut them out by hand. The vinyl I'm using is an Oracle 651. It's a good vinyl to work with. It's got a pretty aggressive adhesive on the back side, but you can also make decals with poster board. If you get white poster board, you could spray paint it black or silver and get a very similar result. Let's begin by layering the decals. I'm just leaving about a sixteenth of an inch sliver on the edges. It's real easy to make. Let's start by putting the decals on the wings. And I'm going to look at the previous plane I did. I'm going to put this about here. I don't stress out too much about perfect placement. Looks good. Do the other wing. Let's add decals to the fuselage. Try to do this upside down. Let's see how this looks. I'm not going to press it down all the way. I want to look at it from a couple different angles and make sure that that's where I want it. Check it from this side. Twist it just a little bit. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to add the arrow. Make sure that's right in line. really OCD you can get in and measure everything I'm not too particular as long as it's pretty close okay let's do the same on the other side I'm 
All right, that looks good. Now let's do the canopy. Canopy is made up of a whole bunch of individual pieces. Let's start with the center here at the front. You'll see that the decal is slightly smaller in the front panel. I'm going to get that centered on there. Now I'll add the side panels. Same on the other side. And I'll start working my way around. I like doing the side panels first. I'm going to run those just above the cut line. There we go. See, I've got a little bit of a gap between that front glass. Let's add the next one. Flip it around and do the same on the other. My gap isn't quite as even as I like, but sometimes that just happens. I'll just tell Jesse to fly faster. That way nobody will see it. Oops. Start here in the center. And I've just got this center section centered between the two pieces of glass on the sides. visually center this. It actually hangs down a little bit further on the sides than the other center sections going across the top. That looks really good. From time to time, you're going to have decals that just do not want to stick. I want to show you a glue that I really like to use in the event you have decals that just don't want to stay stuck down. This is Eileen's Tacky Glue. You can get this at any craft store. You can get it off Amazon. What I like about this is that you can stick the decals to the aircraft, you don't have to worry about melting the decals. If you use hot glue or if you use spray adhesive, you're going to have a really crinkly looking decal. This stuff works great. The only downside of using this is it takes a long time to dry. I'm going to give the aircraft a final inspection. There are a couple things on here that are bugging me, so I think I'm going to go in and fix this area right here where I've got the overspray. I was just gonna leave it, but this is an instructional video. So I'm gonna show you how to fix a mistake. All right, so the two areas that I wanna fix are gonna be this area here where the yellow's got a little bit of gray creeping in. And also I've got a lot of overspray over here on the wing tip. We're gonna do part of the mask here and then we'll do the rest of the mask in the paint booth. 
I'm just going to run a piece of tape where I want a nice clean edge. All right, put one piece of tape there. And you can probably see that overspray a little better now. I'm also going to run a piece of tape right here. Alright, let's jump over to the paint booth and we'll finish this up. You can see that the wing tip is going to be extremely easy. I've got the hard line created by the tape. I just have to have a mask that'll protect the rest of the wing. I've just got a small piece of scrap. Now I'm going to lightly paint right along this edge. All right, and that's all it takes. I can go ahead and peel this off and show you what it'll look like. Now, instead of having that dark gray going into the light gray, you can see I've got a nice clean edge. Now we're gonna do something similar over here on the yellow, but the mask will be a little bit more involved. Let's start with my trusty aluminum foil. And I'm gonna lay a couple pieces of scrap down. Keep the yellow paint from getting on the wings. Get a little bit more aluminum foil over here on the other wing. And we'll give this a quick spray. Take this off. I think we're ready to put the motor in. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Hopefully you found the content helpful. If you enjoyed content like this, be sure and indicate in the comments section down below. 2020 is going to be a really exciting year. You are not gonna believe how many aircraft we're gonna be releasing. And now that all these aircraft are gonna be kitted with Maker Foam, the aircraft have never looked better. Okay, question for the viewers out there. What kind of aircraft would you like to see featured on the Tech Channel in 2020? Also, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, see you guys.